Total Driver with Jean Corbett. TotalDriver.com.au Hello, Jean. How are you? Good, Chris. How are you today? Very, very well. Now, we're still on, of course, on safe driving, and that's your main emphasis. And um, you're still talking about uh, what we started with Total Driver last time we spoke, I think, and that was uh, younger drivers. So uh, there's a few questions that, that I'm going to put to you, and you've got some uh, pretty uh, pertinent answers, I think. Why are young drivers so compromised in the way they behave on the road and sometimes act so badly? It literally comes back to what they're seeing as a driver. And, and this is what we've failed to understand in the past. So the way that they naturally process threats and hazard information is biologically what they were designed for, to walk and run. So everything that they did there that kept them alive is now creating and compounding the risk. I'll give you an example. You're walking down the footpath and the concrete's broken. First thing you do is look at the footpath. You could get hurt. And then you look for a way around the footpath so you're not going to get hurt. That's not until you're beside or in front of that threat that you'll pick your eyes up and look forward again. The average person only looks forward three to five metres. What you've really done is you've collapsed your peripheral vision, you've lost your tunnel vision, and they've dropped down your eyes down to your close range vision. When you put that person behind the wheel of a car, that's how they process the threats on the road. They're another car, an intersection, change in direction, anything like that. So what's happened is they look down to each threat, but now we've introduced speed and our brain can't process speed. So what the apprehension actually does is collapse our peripheral vision and subtract our tunnel vision. So think of rolling your your finger and your thumb around to form a circle, like the directors do one that you see on the movies. You're now looking through a portal, which means you've lost that big picture of what's really going on. So if you can only see through that little portal, means your vision's compromised. That means your decisions are compromised, and that means your driving behaviour is now compromised. And we're not teaching our kids any of this. So these young people have received their licences, they've been fairly well controlled when they've been getting their licences, but now once they've got their licences, they suddenly become heavily overrepresented in accidents. Why is that the case, Gene? Well, I mean, they're not just overrepresented in accidents, it's off the charts. A 3,000% increase compared to their pre licensed driving behaviour, five times the fatality rate for their, compared to normal drivers, and over a third will crash in their first six months. So essentially where it goes wrong is the passengers, the the people that are supervising their driving, are constantly very nervous about this role that they've been thrust into. So they overthink for the driver. They overact. They make all the decisions, trying to keep themselves and the driver safe. The moment the young person goes for their driving test, which is nothing more than a series of slow-speed manoeuvres and road rules in a controlled environment, that safety net's taken away from them. And we haven't taught them how to manage how quickly the environment evolves and how to manage this decision-making process and how their brain is playing tricks on them. So as such, the risk is hiding outside where they're actually looking. And it only takes that one thing to be introduced that they physically couldn't see, and that's what causes the accident because they don't have a process to manage that evolving window of information. So to fix it, you've actually got to go right back to the beginning. It's like having a favourite garment and the stitching doesn't work, which means the garment doesn't fit. It, it, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. You've literally got to undo all that stitching and re-put it together again. And it's, it's built around what we call postural stability. And that's going to be our safe driving tip for today. All right. Well, let's hear it. Uh, the safe driving tip is what? It's all about seating and balance. Now, think about if you're standing on a bus or a train or, or even a boat. The first thing you do is stand with your feet apart and gripping the ground through your feet so you don't fall over. It's a foundation for any skill that we want to do. With drivers, if you look, you'll find their legs are together and they use a steering wheel as a brace, which means they can't think, they can't make decisions and they're naturally working against themselves. Bring the seat further forward so the knees are nice and spaced. Just the left knee rests on the console, the right on the door card. Bring the hands down. Just by bringing the hands down from 10 to 2 to a quarter to 3, will reduce their fatigue level by over 30% in its own right. The next thing you want to do is reduce their grip on the control. So just get them to imagine there's an open tube of toothpaste between their hands and the wheel. If you can reduce that physical stress, if you can bring the balance down to the lower body, not the upper body, you'll relieve the the tension that relieves the adrenaline and suddenly they'll start to use their peripheral vision, not their close range tunnel vision. So that's the most important thing that you can teach a young driver today. 